Hello, welcome to another Ensemble Conversations with me, Mark Kilmurray. Thank you so much once more for donating to the theatre, for those cancelled tickets becoming donations. It's just wonderful. It keeps us here, it keeps us buoyant. Uh, we'll keep you updated with any future cancellations of shows coming up. Uh, of course, it's day to day at the moment, but uh, keep uh, track on us with Facebook page and all our social media outlets and we'll let you know more. This morning, I'm very excited, we have the incredibly talented and wonderful Todd McKenney talking to us. Hello, Todd. Hi, Mark. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm well, thank you. As well as can be expected in these yeah. weird times. Yes. How's isolation for you? How are you coping? Uh, do you know what? I, I just, at the beginning, I sort of treated it like a bit of a holiday. So and then about <laughs> three weeks, three weeks in, uh, reality kind of hit. And then now yes. I find I have... Um, sort of good days and bad days and just trying to work out how to stay creative and how to stay in touch with people has, has been challenging. But um, I think I've now got a kind of process in place. So I do make sure I do a little bit of work. Um, I'm in involving myself in online conversations like yours just to, you know, keep yeah. um, my creative juices flowing. And um, I'm um, severely cuddling my dogs and I <laughs> wouldn't be surprised if they take an AVO out on me anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's right. Yes. Well, it keeps you, it keeps you busy it keep, and, and keeps the love there, doesn't it? It's because you can't, no, totally you does. can't cuddle anybody. Pets, no, and I'm know. on, uh, you know what, I'm, I'm on tour for so often that they they quite often live at the dog sitter's house and while I go off and do musical or whatever. So it's really nice to actually have some time with them. And the other thing I'm doing is I've sunk myself into my garden so my garden is looking uh, pretty schmick and I'm just trying to stay positive about the whole thing fantastic that'd be nice that's that's a lovely thing to do gardening is uh, psychologically very relaxing anyway I think it so is it's good to get you know for people like me in a business that you know is lights and sequins and makeup it's good to get a little bit grubby yeah uh, well for me because I was thinking um I, like you, keeping busy uh, with the theatre, of course, but also on those that downtime, what to do. And I thought, oh, this is what retirement would be like. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Do you know what? I've been threatening to retire. I always <laughs> said I'd retire at 50 and then just enjoy the rest of my, my time. And I've had exactly the same, yeah. the same thought. If this yeah. is retirement... It's probably not for me. Exactly. Yeah. That's right. No. <laughs> well, until recently, you were one of the busiest performers in show business. Um, I was just interested with the roles that you pick, uh, because they're usually long engagements. How do you pick them? What do you say yes to? And what do you sort of think? Mm, it's not going to be for me because of the length of time. Uh, well, I... I that is the, the older I get the less I want to tour for long stretches yeah. when I was young I loved it and I got to see the country and all that now as I get older I'll be 55 next month and I kind of want to spend more time in my home state but that's mm. showbiz and you know I, I, I know how to tour I know how it goes but I I do pick shows that have shorter runs in general but the main thing for me is I need to uh I need to feel the show. So when I read it or they send me an archival tape of something from overseas, a production, or or I read a script, I have to feel the character immediately. And I've learnt my lesson, you know, throughout the few decades I've been, you know, working that I never do anything for the money. And if I'm second, <laughs> I'm second, well, we, we don't really in showbiz anyway, but, no. and, and I, and I, um, I I don't do anything that I really don't feel like is is right for me. And I have done both of those things in the past. I did cats when I never really wanted to, and I did right. it for the money. Mm, right. <laughs> um, and it was a disaster. Mm. And um, there was another role, um, actually singing, <laughs> singing in the rain, which I, I oh. didn't really didn't really feel it. I did it, and again, personally for me, it was a challenge. So I now have to. Uh, uh, my heart has to be in the project. And why? Uh, why was Cats not? A, was it just because you felt like you, 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 you weren't uh, involved in it creatively, or it didn't excite you, or was it just more the work, or what was it about Cats that you? Uh, it was actually the the piece. I found I found the piece really um, hard, and also you know. You, you're on your knees and you're, it was hard on your body. Mm. And it was all, I was also kind of working anonymously. And I don't know whether it's because of my ego or because <laughs> of just my, my taste. But when I work, I like to feel like I'm 
there's me in there. Yeah. But, you know, you're in a lycra body suit, so you're always conscious about your body. The dancing was incredibly difficult. And I just never got the personal payoff for it myself. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, and, but I learned my lesson. You know, that was the first show I ever got offered without having to audition because I was an acrobat and they were looking for an acrobat and acrobats were short on the ground mm. at that time. Mm. And so I, I kind of took the job because I was flattered that they rang me and said, would you like to do cats? And that was the first yeah. time that had ever happened. And so, but I learned my lesson now. I really have to uh, understand and, um, and and feel it. Is the, I, I, I always have a feeling about a show. Yeah, so it's, it goes on in, uh, a lot of your experience with an instinct now, I guess. Uh, but totally. What's right. But you work um, theatre, television uh, and uh, stage as well, and particularly for us, uh, we'll come to later. How do you um, prepare for the different environments, the different parts of stepping into that spotlight? Uh, television is very different from musical and uh, acting different from musical theatre. Mm -hmm. what, what are your preparations before doing these? Well, uh, they all have their own... Um they all have their own feel, they all have their own vibe, and all those vibes are very different, or theatre and musical theatre are, are close, but television, as you say, is completely mm. um, a, a whole nother beast. And it's television kind of, uh, I don't know, live television particularly, it actually scares me a little bit, but I kind of like that, <laughs> that feeling. Um, it's the yeah. adrenaline, I suppose, you get. It's like every show in live television feels like an opening night performance in a theatrical show. Yeah. Um, but my, I'm... I always love what I do unless I'm unrehearsed, unprepared maybe is a better word than unrehearsed. I'm, I'm fine off the cuff, but I need to, I need to know the piece. I'm no good, for instance, at doing big concerts where they ring you up and you're one of 20 performers and they give you your sheet music the day before and then on you go. <laughs> I hate that. Yeah, yeah. So even though my shows, and you've seen some of my sort of, you know, yeah. one man style shows, the casting couch things we did at that ensemble, um, mm. Even though we wing those, I still know where they're going yes. and I know the shape of them. And so if I don't know the shape of something, it scares me. So rehearsing is um, my, uh, my, my secret weapon, I suppose. I mean, I love mm. to rehearse. I love getting in the studio. Um, I always have. And I think that's a dancer thing because I spent so much time in a studio growing up um, that I, uh, I just, it's all about rehearsals and preparation for me. So. Yeah. Yeah. You can only ad lib when you feel safe, basically. Totally. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I love the fact, like doing those one man shows where it feels for the audience like it's me meandering and can go anywhere. I like that feeling. Yes. Um, but I have to know what the, exactly what the frame is. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And you have those pointers along the way. You think, okay, now yeah. we can go to this next song because we've finished that. Um, yeah. Acting, you did six dance lessons in six weeks with us twice uh, with yep. the wonderful Nancy Hayes. Uh, it was a huge hit, huge tour. Um, both seasons sold out with a 10 year gap in between. What was it attracted must you to be that? Mark, Mark, it must be time to remount that, don't you think? Yeah, well, that's right. It's, it's now, <laughs> isn't it? I think that's I right. Think Nancy and yeah. I Nancy and I loved it, and we often, yeah. whenever I see Nancy, I spoke to her a couple of days ago, actually, and um, we always we always bring it up. It was such an yeah. amazing time in both of our lives. Six dances, it's just the way um, the audiences reacted to it. Yes. Um, I mean, we were, we were booked for the first season of that for a seven-week tour, and we were using the Opera House, I think, at that point, because you had some other stuff going on at the ensemble. That's right. And um, so that seven-week tour turned into um, an 18-month national tour, <laughs> and did. we, it was, and we loved it. But it, it, it also cement, it, it was huge, and it cemented Nancy's and my friendship, which is absolutely important to me, and mm. working with Sandra Bates was uh, something I will just be forever grateful for. Yeah. And also, I'd never experienced a straight play before. I mean, for me, my musical theatre um, shows everything is aiming towards the song, <laughs> you know, and yeah. to not have that song, I found that really challenging. And I also think I was a pretty crap actor <laughs> at the beginning of that process. No, and no, I was. <laughs> no, seriously, I was. And the the care that um, Sandra and Nancy took with me, mm. and they and Sandra was you know, she was deadly honest. She said to me one day, which is one of the best things anyone's ever said, she said to me, Todd, when you act, yeah. it's awful. <laughs> <laughs> and I was, Fantastic. I was like, oh my God. That was like, she was giving it to me both barrels yeah. Yeah. and for a 
really, really good reason. So yeah. she just said, pull it back, find the reality. And it, it's something I'll be forever grateful for because now um, you know, I just learned from that and I didn't take offense. I, I want to know, you know, when I'm something is not working. And um, that yes. I'd say Boy From Oz and Six Dance Lessons are my two favorite career moments so far. Oh, that's great. That's fantastic. Mm. Yes, yeah, Sandra has that lovely ability. I've worked as an actor with Sandra of saying something like that, but in the nicest possible way. And also... Yes it means such a lot because she's being direct and honest but also you you respond to it i remember thinking oh right okay and it, it just those little tiny bits of advice that she gives in the friendliest nicest way um can yes. propel you to the next moment really beautifully um oh yeah. look even after that mark i i, I used to run to rehearsals to yeah. just listen to Sandra speak because yeah, she was yeah. so yeah. inspiring and so knowledgeable and yeah. i just felt like i was having this major career lesson yeah, you fantastic. know um it's thrust upon me and you know it, it, and it changed my life i take the things that sandra bates said to me during those rehearsals and the techniques and things i take mm. them now into every single show i do whether it be a musical theater or a cabaret show and um and it's you know you can't pay for tuition like that you know no. it was a, it was it was a gift yes absolutely and i yes for me like you say, when I was uh, did the first show uh, with Sandra called Japes, I ran to rehearsal. It was such a pleasure. Mm. And also there's a bit of gossip, there's fun. But yeah. with Sandra, it was always about the work. It wasn't, it's never about ego. It's never about uh, the director or it was just about the work. And it's a pleasure. Yeah. It makes it a pleasure and, and, and it's fun. And you learn more too, like you say. Oh, and it's fun and her stories are brilliant. She's, yeah. a, she's oh, a, yes. a great storyteller. And so that was, that was part of it. And also the other thing. So in that rehearsal period for six dance lessons, you know, picture me, you know, in this new environment for me between mm. two of the greats of our industry, you know, Sandra at the helm, <laughs> Nancy by my side. Yeah. And I, and just for me watching Nancy develop her character from reading the script for the first two weeks. And I remember mm. on the Monday of the third week of rehearsal, Nancy had the script down <laughs> and I remember her walking in and I don't know what she took over the weekend, but yeah. she came in and her character, Lily, yeah. Harrison was yeah. formed and yeah. it was there. And yeah. that too made me pull up my socks. I went, oh gosh, yes. I, I, you know, Nancy, because in a two-handed play, there's no point if Nancy wipes the floor with me. No. You know, <laughs> again, That's I had right. to step up, and so yeah. I have this other amazing lady. You know, I, yeah. I was on. I was. I had two people on either side steering me through what. I can honestly say is one of the best theatrical experiences I've ever had. That's fantastic. I directed Nancy in Murderers, a, a lovely play a few years ago. And like you say, on the Friday, she was reading it. On the Monday, this fully formed character appeared and it was absolutely amazing. And she was absolutely wonderful throughout the whole run. Yeah. Uh, having created this character, it seemed to be like plucked out of thin air. Amazing. Yes, it's an it's it's great to watch to yeah. watch the the changes and the nuances and then to watch her go right that's set let's go and she nailed it every single night and um, it was just a real lesson for me and the oh well to, actually we got on so well I've now got two greyhounds the dogs that I cuddle endlessly yeah. at the moment and my second greyhound is Nancy Hayes the greyhound <laughs> <laughs> I named my dog after her fantastic. <laughs> I rang yes. her when I was getting the dog on the way back from picking up the dog and I said, oh, Nancy, can I, um, I've got this new puppy, can I name her after you? And she said, oh, she'll be a needy little thing, darling. <laughs> and now every now and again, I'll get a text and it'll say, it'll be from Nancy saying, have you fed me this morning? Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. That's brilliant. I'd love to see a photo of you with, with Nancy, the, the dog. That's fantastic. <laughs> well, I can give you a photo of these. Yes, photos, please. Um, now, Todd, just, I was watching some rehearsal footage recently with uh, the tightrope moment in Barnum. Oh. And that looked to me absolutely terrifying. Not only mastering it as you did, but doing it every night in front of an audience. How did that feel before you went on? Did it become just muscle memory? No, it never got easier. <laughs> That's it. And I, I, every now and again, I'd fall off um, and have to get back on and <laughs> climb up the ladder and stand on the rope again. And and but I, I always got across. I only fell off um, during four four different performances. But wow. that was a skill that 
um, I will probably never use again. <laughs> <laughs> well, no. But no. I had to. But the thing is, I had to. I couldn't fake it. I had. I, they set a tightrope up just next to me here in, in my house, and so um, uh, I have this had this tightrope. So I would spend an hour or two on it every day, and then I'd go to NICA, the National Institute of Circus Arts in Melbourne, um, where they would coach me, and right. I was just on the. I was on the wire probably three hours a day for the entire run. So I would come to work at five o'clock for the eight o'clock show. And yeah. from five to six, that was just me on the wire because it was also, it was the end of act one. It was the big crescendo of the, of the first half was, you know, really make it kind of thing. <laughs> yes. And, um, and you know, I had to pull it off, but you can't mm. fake it. It's just hours on the wire. Is, yeah. Um, yeah. But Amazing. I thought, you know, if if um if this um coronavirus hadn't you know reared its head, I could be having a career in kids' parties right That's now. That's right. Yeah, you'd be good. Yeah. You'd just <laughs> string up between two <laughs> trees. Yeah, or I could use the I could use the hills hoist. Yeah, go around yeah. Like a couple fantastic. Of times. You can zoom it anyway. You can zoom film yourself on zoom and if uh, only I had the clothesline. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ah. Um, but I guess also because you are very good ad-libbing when you fell off that became a moment for the audience anyway that was a live theater experience wasn't it yes yeah but I, you, yes yes i think <laughs> i said something like where's hugh jackman when you <laughs> there you go because of course he he just done the greatest showman so i think half of our audience turned up to see barnum thinking they were going to see the greatest showman oh, of course. so when hugh jackman didn't turn up and i turned up i think yeah. <laughs> I kind of started the show with 70% of the audience feeling let down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yes, well, uh, but uh, I was going to say, how do you, when having done that with uh, with Tightrope and the, uh, a huge role like Barnum, but also recently Lord Farquhar on his knees, how how long did it take you to recover from these shows? Because these are, they're not just sort of um, acting as you were in six dance sessions, although you were dancing as well, but they're, they're huge um uh, demands on you physically yes um there as the and the older i get that my body is you know telling me that the demands are you know, <laughs> paying paying their price or taking the, you know their um toll on me now i've got arthritis and you know all sorts mm. of stuff but um i just in a way i'm thankful that those roles are so demanding because it's me meant i haven't um, giving myself the luxury of letting myself go, <laughs> you know, yeah, I'm still yeah. at the gym, I'm watching yep. what I eat, I, I'm staying as strong as I possibly can. But Lord yep. Farquhar was, um, yeah, that, in Shrek, which is what I was doing when we all got shut down, yeah, actually. Yeah. Um, that he was a, he's a character who's only four foot tall. And so his, my whole show was done on my knees with these little fake legs hanging off my yeah. hips. Um, and Looks amazing. Be, it will it it would you know what it brought the house down yeah. but it killed me yeah it absolutely yeah. killed me and it wasn't my knees everyone used to say to me you know how are your knees because mm. i would run from one side of the stage to the other and do two big dance numbers literally on my knees oh my but it was hilarious and everyone said how are your knees but it was actually my back um, yeah. because I had this weight in front of me, which I had to pull up in order to make the legs work and look as funny as, and appropriate as they were supposed to look. Mm. But then everybody else in the show, especially Ben Mingo, who's played Shrek in this suit, he's nine foot tall. So everybody <laughs> I spoke to in the show was up like that. <laughs> and so it was my neck and my yeah. back. <laughs> yeah. So, but, um, you know, shame that, you know, we only got half the run in because yeah. the crowds loved it and it was, um, it was hilarious. And and did you and a lot of physio, I guess, daily, daily, yeah, yeah daily physio and yeah. gym to keep my to keep the rest of my body uh, moving. Yeah. yeah, but daily physio. I mean, physio is just now just a huge part of my life. And actually, my physio is my trainer. So my yeah. trainer is actually a trained physio. So I get to um, have a one stop too. shop. Mm. Yes, I remember in my early 20s doing a lot of physical theatre and falling over onto my back or my head or my neck and thinking I'm fine. And no one told me at the time, well, when you get to about 50 something, <laughs> you'll feel it. It's almost delayed it's pain. It is delayed pain. And look, Nancy Hayes, uh, Georgie Parker and myself, we all have arthritis in mm. um, in our big toe on our right foot. It's weird. And I was right. talking to Nancy, uh, Nancy about that. I said, how come we've got the same injury? Yeah. And 
then I asked around and a lot of people have it, dancers have it because it's your dominant foot. It's your takeoff and landing leg. Oh, of so course. all of those years in the dance studio, when you didn't have arthritis, you were taken off and landing on that one leg. So there was forever pressure on it. And now, as you say, we're paying the price. Yeah. <laughs> but if we had our time, we'd go back and do it we'd all We'd do again. it all again. That's right. <laughs> um, just briefly on that choreography, that's something that you're doing a, a, a lot of. And the Full Monty mm -hmm. uh, was a huge yeah. success for that. That was something that you enjoy and want to do more of in the future? Uh, yes, I'm better actually choreographing uh, celebrities and non-dancers than I am choreographing uh, really whiz-bang dancers. I, I right. seem to have, I, I understand um, the, the celebrity mindset because when you work with celebrities, especially in a show where we're asking them to strip for, you know, to, to raise awareness for health, yeah. the ladies' Monty's and, and the men's Monty's, you know, there's a, there's a lot riding on them. So they're very nervous. They haven't danced before, let alone stripped. They've yeah. never learned choreography before, but I also understand that they've got a brand they want to protect as well. And so I just think I was the right person um, for, for that job. And in fact, I'm in um, it looks like we're probably going to go again with a couple more. But yeah, I love, I've, I've got the um, celebrity dance market cornered. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I fantastic. enjoy it. I, yeah. I really enjoy it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you must. Yeah, because it's something that you do and also that you can pass on that knowledge is always a good thing too. And I know what it's like to stand on stage and feel vulnerable. And so, uh, yeah. you know, unlike my role when I was on Dancing with the Stars, which was to be judgmental, yeah. um, in the in these shows, I come in as their as their best friend and their mentor and their protector and their you know their their saviour. So, um, you know, I I really enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah, that's fantastic that you're doing it too, and for for good causes too. Um, we would love to have the casting couch back sometime soon. Maybe uh, ah. we'll talk about that in the future. They were fantastic yes, shows and all those guests. Um, it was a wonderful, wonderful show that you did for us. And yeah, we, we should mm. have that back soon when we can all yeah, no, into I'd, a foyer. Yes, I'd, no, absolutely. I'd love to do that. And I'm sure they've got guests lined up. I, I asked, actually asked Marsha Hines if, if we ever did another one, whether she'd come and be my guest. And she's agreed to do that. So Fabulous. Um, it'll be good to have Marsha at the ensemble. Well, there's, there's two reasons to get a cure soon for the virus so we can all get back to, see, to see you both. Todd, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. You're a wonderful ambassador for the Ensemble Theatre, wonderful human being and all around talent. So thank you so much for being here talking to us. My pleasure. I, I dearly love and genuinely love all the people at Ensemble and the audiences and the, just the whole um, vibe and feeling when you work at Ensemble is something really unique. And um, so it's my absolute pleasure. Thank you, Todd. And we'll speak soon. See you soon in a foyer, okay. we hope. <laughs> yes, hope. See ya. See ya. Thank you, Todd McKinney. Thank you for watching again. Uh, we'll be here next week again. Thank you for all those donations. Please keep in touch. Stay safe. And we'll see you next time. Bye.